What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we had all time highs on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Well stocks went up again today and we're getting very close to some of my critical price targets. What should we expect to finish out this week? First up we'll take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right. On SPY, we went up 0.30% today. We're getting very close to that price target I have at $413. Remember that we're still in this low volume melt up and there's no sellers in sight, which is why the stock market continues to go up day after day. Looking back at this chart, you can see that we only have one color of candlestick and they're all green, meaning the market continues to close higher than the open. As soon as a trend like this becomes very obvious, it's very close to the end of the cycle, and we're also getting very close to the price target at $413. So right now, while the market is easy money for the bulls, eventually we will see sellers stepping in. Now keep in mind, there's still a possibility, even though it's going to be a rare occurrence, that we get a high volume blow off top scenario. In a blow off top scenario, we would see a huge influx of buying volume, and that would cause a giant short squeeze at the same exact time, and that would lead to a parabolic move to the upside, which means we could blast right through these price targets and go right to that $417 level or possibly even higher. Remember that a blow off top is followed by a huge massive wave of selling. And even though it is a nice bullish event, it's followed by a huge bearish event because you're going to go down just as fast as you went up. So remember right now, the higher the stock market goes, the higher the risk there is in this market. This market has no foundation and no base and it gapped up to a new all time high. So it doesn't even have price discovery from 403 down to 400. So while this market is still in a very strong bull trend and there's no reason to be a bear in this market, you have to understand that the risk is increasing the higher we go. The risk level that I'm defining this market by is all the way down here at spy levels of $400. So from today's close down to fill that gap is about a 3% drop. That's somewhere in a normal pullback territory of anywhere between one and a half to a 3% drop. And that's where the risk is defined in the S&P 500 at this current time. So there is a good possibility that once we hit one of these price targets, we're going to see about a 3% drop. Now it doesn't mean we have to drop 3% and there is a possibility in an extreme bullish market that we would get a shallow pullback somewhere in the one to one and a half percent range before resuming to the upside. But do understand that the higher we go, the more likely we're going to get a swift pullback. Don't forget the market takes the stairs up and the elevator down and this low volume melt up is what's considered taking the stairs up. You can see we're getting this nice bull flag pattern where we continue to go up, consolidate the gain sideways, and then continue to march higher. If you draw this out, it looks like you're walking up a staircase and you continue to step up one step at a time. That staircase will eventually reach a price where you get the elevator down and it's going to be a very quick massive wave of selling. And that is where your risk is going to be defined at. So just always remember the stock market takes the stairs up and the elevator down and the higher we go, the more likely we're going to see a drastic sell off. So when you pair a bullish event like this with meeting critical price targets, it increases the probability that we're going to see that selling. Now, I'm also not trying to tell you to short this market because the market can continue to stay in this irrational behavior. If we blast through the price target at 413, it increases the probability that we're not done climbing these stairs and we're going to continue to hike higher towards the next price target. So remember these price targets are where you want to get defensive because each of these price targets could trigger that selling. So the next one we're looking for is 413. And if we can close over 413, we're going to start looking above to 417. Also remember that the higher we go in the market, the more profits you should be taking and raising cash because it's not a matter of if we see selling, it's just a matter of when. It's going to catch you off guard and it's going to hit us when we least expect it. And that's why I always suggest that you have a lot of cash if you're a trader at all time highs. When we get that pullback, there's going to be a lot of great buying opportunities in the market. And right now, if you're shopping around for a good trade, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find. So the upside critical resistance levels are going to be those price targets at 413 and 417. And downside support is going to be 403 and the gap close at 400. The 20 simple moving average is now trading somewhere around $399. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we also got very close to our price target today and I don't think that's a coincidence. SPY is getting very close to the $413 price target at the same exact time that the triple Qs are getting close to the $341 price target. So when these price targets are met, we're defining the risk as the gap closes below. We did open yet another gap today on the triple Qs and that gap will close right around $337. The next gap below is a gap fill of around 332.50, dollars 
and then we do have another gap fill below that around $325. The 20 simple moving average is now way down here at $323. So if this market decides to sell off at 341 and come back and retest that 20 simple moving average, that's a drop of about 5.4%. To fill that bottom gap at 325 is about a 4.9% drop, and to fill the gap above there is about a 2.5% drop. The gap we opened today will close at about a 1.25% drop. So you can see there's a lot of gaps below and that's where our risk levels are defined. It is very possible the triple Q's could come all the way back down to 325 and close these gaps. While it's not likely, it is possible, so just be aware of that. We're still in a very strong bull trend with very strong bullish price action, so the more likely scenario is that we would fill one of these top two gaps before finding support and then heading back higher. Keep in mind if we close above 341 on the triple Q's, the next price target is all the way up there at brand new all time highs at 350. So the market is still bullish and it's still likely we're going to continue to head up towards these price targets before we see a larger stock market correction. Remember any selling in the short term is most likely just a pullback and we should have at least one more leg higher before we see a correction. On the Dow Jones we continue to trade sideways ever since we got to that all time high. We did drop a little bit today going down about a quarter percent and we still haven't filled that gap at 335. The next price target above is all the way up here at 341, but we need to start decisively closing back above 337 in order for us to get to that level. You could see the Dow Jones is doing a very nice slow stair step climb and it continues to look like it wants to go higher with the very strong bull trend. There is one more gap to fill below at 331.70 and the 20 simple moving average is now at 331. On the Russell 2000 we also dropped about a quarter percent today and the Russell 2000 continues to look like it's in a consolidation wedge. We keep finding support right on top of the 50 EMA at 219 and closing below the 20 simple moving average. There's no decisive trend for the bears or the bulls and downside support is going to be still at this 50 EMA at 219. A break below that the market starts looking a lot more bearish and we could find support at 210 or 205. Upside resistance is the 20 simple moving average at 222, the resistance trend line breakout at 223 and then our resistance levels at 227 and 233. On ARK-K, we finally saw a bullish day today going up over 4% and closing back above the 50 EMA. We're still slowly developing a bull trend, but all of these moving averages still need to get back above the 50 EMA. So if ARK-K can continue to close over this 50 EMA level at 126, we could start to go back into a bullish trend and ARK-K could go back into a bull market. Right now, downside support is going to be 126 and the 20 simple moving average at 121, and our resistance level is all the way up here at the gap close, which is right around 143. So don't get overly bullish on ARK-K just yet even though you can start taking some long exposure here. Keep in mind the other indices in the stock market do look like they could be due for a pullback and it's hard to believe that ARK-K is going to do better than the rest of the indices when they've been heavily underperforming. On the VIX which is our fear indicator, we continue to see the VIX going lower closing at 16.7 today. Remember as long as the VIX is heading lower and staying below 20, it means the market is likely going to continue to see all time highs. We would need to see the VIX spike back into the 20s to get a stock market correction and right now looking at the VIX it does not signal that a correction is near. That can change at any point but right now at the VIX levels we're seeing it does favor all time highs in the stock market. If we start getting the VIX closing back above 18.2 that would be our first signal that the VIX could be spiking and getting ready for a stock market correction. On gold we're slowly developing some bullish trending but the price action is still below the 50 EMA which is still our price target which is now right around 17.58. Just above there we have two more price targets at 1761 and 1776. If gold does break down, the support level is all the way down here at 1686. On silver we're getting ready to retest the 50 EMA at 2560 with downside support right around 2510. If we can break above the 50 EMA, we have a price target up here at 2650 and the downside support is all the way down here at 2350 on a break below 25. On Bitcoin we're finally seeing some follow through ever since we got a break to the bull side on this consolidation wedge. Remember we were in a consolidation and we did see a break on Bitcoin over the last couple of days but we weren't seeing that volume and that follow through. Today we're seeing the volume spiking quite a bit and we got through that price target at 62,500. So the next price target we're looking for on Bitcoin is going to be right up here around $64,226. Our downside support is now going to be right around 59,000 because that was previous resistance. Keep in mind that Bitcoin still has bullish price action and a bullish trend and we would need to break below the 50 EMA to get a Bitcoin correction going. The 50 EMA is now trading right around 54,600. Keep in mind this breakout only further extends Bitcoin on monthly charts 
So even though it is due for a correction, you need to wait for the price action confirmation breakdown below the 50 EMA. On Amazon, we went up about 0.61% today and we continue to show bullish signals breaking out above that resistance trend line. The next resistance level on Amazon should be very strong and it's up here around 34.42. Amazon is due for a cool down, so look for downside support at the breakout which is right around 33.80 and our previous support levels at 32.97 and 32.60. As you can tell from the chart, the 20 simple moving average is very close to crossing back above the 50 EMA, which means Amazon will be in a full bullish trend and could be ready to start running. On Tesla, we saw that follow through with that bullish breakout today because yesterday we did get a breakout above the resistance trend line and a close above the 50 EMA. The Tesla bulls did not wait for a retest and they went full bull out of the gate at the open today, blasting right through that resistance level at 718 and getting all the way up to our price target at $762. That level is a resistance level as you can tell we closed right on top of it and that is not coincidence. Tesla bulls still need to break above 762 and break out of the next resistance trend line around $777. The next price target above that would be 802. You can see Tesla is starting to look bullish and the bullish trend is slowly but surely coming back but we need to see that 20 simple moving average get back above the 50 EMA. Tesla did open a gap today that won't close until we get back down to 704. Remember, a lot of these gaps are not likely going to get closed until a lot of these stocks go back through a correction. So keep in mind these gaps are important, but as long as we see this bullish price action and bullish trending, we're not likely going to see these gaps filled until we see the stocks roll over. Downside support is now going to be $718 level and the 50 EMA right around 694. On Apple, we had a very bullish day today going up 2.43% and blasting through that next price target at 134. The next price target will be the previous daily high at 137. Keep in mind that Apple is also getting overly extended and it could be due for a pullback. We're going to look for possible support levels at 134. 130 and the gap closed down here at 128. On the financial sector, we dropped about 0.93% today, but we're still holding up with some bullish price action and a bullish trend. The industrials dropped about half a percent today, but they're still closing over the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. The healthcare sector went up about 0.40% today and still closing above the 5 EMA with a bullish trend. The energy sector is still hanging around the 50 EMA, which is holding up as support. The bulls need to stay above the 50 EMA to try to get back into a bull trend and below the 50 EMA, the energy sector will start looking bearish. So going back to the S&P 500, you can still see that we have bullish sectors across the board with a very low VIX, and it looks like the market is going to continue to melt up on low volume. Keep in mind as we get close to these price targets, we could see sellers coming back into this market, and we could see the elevator down of selling. Just trade this market day by day, and remember that the higher we go, the more risk there's going to be to the downside because we still haven't seen a pullback. Remember that nothing can go up in a straight line forever, and nothing can go down in a straight line forever. We're always going to see a return to the mean eventually. So while the market can stay irrational, it is also due for a pullback, so be very aware of that. Watch the price target very closely on SPY at 413, and remember if we break over that level, it does increase the probability we're going to 417 but we are getting very overbought and overextended at these levels and we are definitely due for a pullback and a cooldown. Also remember on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm giving intraday updates on the market to help you stay on the right side of the trade. I'm also bringing new trade ideas to you weekly, so if you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Discord community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of the video. Next up is our trade idea Shopify and we see Shop doing really well today going up 3.29% and getting very close to our next price target at 12.60. The price targets I want you to watch for next are 1260 and 1316. We're slowly but surely seeing the bullish trend building back up and these moving averages are getting ready to cross back above the 50 EMA and we'll see that full bull trend returning to Shopify in the very near future. All of the moving averages are now positively sloping and the price action continues to close above the 5 EMA. Downside support levels are going to be 1204 and the 50 EMA around 1179. So Shopify is still looking really good and it should have no trouble getting to the rest of these price targets. So we're going to continue to cover Shopify and I'm going to help you stay on the right side of this trade. Remember that I have more trade ideas just like Shopify weekly on the Stocks Channel Discord. So if you're looking for more trade ideas, come check out the Stocks Channel Discord, which you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of the video. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.